So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to say label the text dot text is equal to uh, not just like that is equal to plus. So if I now launch the application, I will be presented with a plus. But as you will see, we are going to need the previous number also in addition to the new number. So what we need is if I now write 78 and I say plus and then I write a new number here. When I now click on equal, we not only need this number right here, but we also need the previous number. So we need to store the previous number and then we need to and then we need to uh, perform the math operation on the previous number and our new number. So up here, we have we are going to need to store the previous number when the user clicks on either plus, minus, equal, uh, or divide, or something like that. So we're going to need a new variable that I am just going to name previous number, which is going to be zero. And of course, I need to define it. It's going to be zero. And then down here, I'm also going to define a new, let's see, this one also has to be a double, and then I'm going to perform or <laughs> create a new variable that I'm going to uh, name perform performing math, which is false. And performing math is going to be true when I either click on plus, minus, divide or multiply. So then it's going to become true. And that is our clue for storing the previous number and resetting everything so that the user can write in the new number. So what we're going to do here is we're first of all going to check or when we have clicked on either plus, minus or divide, we're going to say performing math is equal to true. No, not train. Let's see. True. There we go. And then next time. So now we're going to display the plus sign so that the user knows that he has clicked on plus. We're going to say performing math is equal to true so that we know that we now are going to type in a new number. So up here, when the user starts typing a new number again, we have to check if performing math is equal to true because if it is, we need to do some special stuff. What we're going to need is we're first of all going to reset label.text because we're going to type in a new number. So equals zero. Or actually, we don't need that one. We can actually just say label.text is equal to the thing that the user, the button that the user just clicked on, which is sender.tag minus one. So, and then we are going to do one more thing here. And we're going to say number on screen is equal to label.text dot text and then we're also going to say doing math do doing let's see doing how have I performing math performing math is equal to true just so it knows that next time we are going to reset the field again and now we are in the process of typing in a new number and then down and then down here, when we also start uh, clicking either plus divide multiply, we also have to store the previous number. So we say previous number is equal to label.txt. So this is before we, we, re, uh, we reset it. We're going to store the label.txt in our variable so that we know what our previous number was. So now we have stored that. We probably need some force on wrapping. Let's see, just like that. And then up here, we also need to force unwrap. And number.screen is, of course, also a double. So we need to convert that to a double. And then let's see if we need some more, which I don't think we need. So let's, or we're also going to add an else statement here. So if we are in the process of typing in a new number and we have already written the first character, we're just going to continue like normal. So let's copy that and add it to our else statement. And now if we launch the application, we will be able to type in a number, click on plus, and then type in a new number. So let's see if that is working as we want it to. So I'm going to type in 15, then plus, and then 16. And as you can see, it reset 
and that okay yeah that's because we need to say false here because we don't want to call this one every time so now if i launch it one more time then we should be able to type in a number click on plus and then a new number so let's see 15 plus 16 and that works beautifully so now our next task is going to be to first of all add the other button so that we can also click on multiply and minus and then we're going to add the equal button so that now i would be able to add the equal button and it will calc it would calculate my previous number plus this number that's currently displaying so let's do that and here we're just going to say divide which is then label of text is equal to here we're going to say divide here we're going to say multiply and here we are going to say minus and one more thing in order to store which operation that we're going to perform when the user clicks on is equal to or equals we need to also store the operation that we are going to perform. So I'm going to create a new variable var operation is equal to zero and the operation that we're going to perform is equal to sender dot tag. And now we are going to add another button which is the equal button that's going to let us perform a uh, to perform the math that we want. So if it's not a number we're going to check if it is um, if the sender has a tag uh, that is equal to 16 which was the is equal to button then we're going to perform our math operation and we're going to check if operation that we stored up here as you remember we store the tag of the button that lets us identify which operation we're going to perform so if operation is equal to 12, which means we're currently dividing, then we're going to do something and we're just going to copy this four times, three, four, and really we don't need else if, so I'm just going to, just to be sure, I'm just going to add an else if statement. And then if it's equal to 12, we're dividing. If it's equal to 13, we're doing something else, 40, and 15 and what we're doing you can just check up here because they're the same tags and it looks like we have a little problem here and that is because i've written if else instead of else if so that should solve the problem so now if we now focus on the plus which we did up here now we're going to uh, check how we would go about uh, adding our previous number to our new number and we do that by saying label the text so the label that's going to display our result is equal to our previous number uh, plus the number on the screen. So the number, the first number that the user entered plus the number on the screen. So the active number and the reason we are saying plus is because we're in the bracket of plus. And of course, I need to convert this to a string before I pass it to my label. So, and then we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste it here also. We're just going to change this one to be a divide. Here it's multiply and here it's minus. And now it should be working, but just before we launch it, I want to add one more thing and that is the reset button. So I'm going to write else, else, if uh, I'm just to be sure I'm just also going to define the sender tag that tag is equal to was it 11 which was the reset button then we're going to say label.txt is equal to nil which means we're just resetting everything here previous number is equal to nil and number on screen is equal to nil and just to be in absolutely sure we're also going to say operation is equal to nil just to reset absolutely everything now i'm going to launch my application and now we should have let's see let's make it label.txt we should have a fully functional calculator so let's try with a simple equation i'm just going to say 15 plus 5 clicks on equal is 20 that's correct divided by 2 should be 10 awesome multiply by 
10 is equal to 100 minus 50 should be 50 and there we go here we have a fully functional calculator you can even reset it and start from scratch just like that and of course you can go ahead and go go ahead and add other features so that when you click on equal many times it automatically uh, performs the last operation you could just check uh, apple's uh, standard calculator in order to see which features you might want to build in like uh, decimals adding that option so this is how I would go about building a calculator or maybe not exactly like this but this is at least in my opinion the most easiest way to show what is actually being done and if you enjoyed this video make sure that you click the subscribe button and then I will look forward to seeing you in the next video but before I end this video I just want to say that I had do have a Swift course for beginners or who wants to master the Swift language. I will have a link of that course in the description where I explain all of the basics or all of the Swift language in that course, which will make it absolutely comfortable with apps like these. So if there's anything you didn't understand, something you want to dive more into, then just click the link in the description and it will take you to my course, which goes pretty comprehensive through uh, the the, the tricks and tips and things that we use in order to make this calculator but as i said thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe and i will see you back in the next video